Hi, Jamie with UK Extension, and today I am standing in a big patch of poison ivy, the things I don't do for you people. Let's talk a little bit about this plant because it gets a lot of press, and if you've ever had the allergic reaction or the rash that comes with poison ivy, you know what I'm talking about. We should start there. Um, first of all, every individual is not impacted to the same degree by the poison ivy allergen or the reaction or whatever. It varies from individuals and it can change over the period of your lifetime. When I was younger, I used to get it severely, lots of exposure to it, clearing farmland and things. Over time, I'm far less susceptible, but I still do get it a little, but it doesn't drive me insane. So first of all, how to identify poison ivy. Um, it's very easy once you learn what it looks like. Poison ivy is typically a three-leaf plant. It grows as both a vine on the ground. It can be semi-woody, like a short shrub. Some of these are developing little woody stems. And of course, it can climb as well. The growth on climbing vines will look different than some of this. The leaves can be margined with notches. A lot of people see notched poison ivy and mistake it from for poison oak, which we do not have in the state, or if so, it's much, much less common. Another tip, uh, these leaves can be totally smooth, particularly if the plant is climbing, more like you see over here. And another identifying feature is the two leaves in back will have very short petioles. They're almost stuck right on the stem, and the one leaf in front has a longer stem. Um, poison ivy is actually not an unattractive plant. It has beautiful fall color, white berries, and the birds eat those berries and spread it around. But the problem with this plant for most people in terms of allergic reactions is the oil. All parts of this plant contain an oil that when it comes in contact with your skin will create an allergic reaction. That can result in, and that reaction can occur immediately after exposure or it can occur up to two days later. The resulting effect is raised watery bumps and blisters. It can inflame the skin underneath and cause that to be very painful. And the itch will drive you mad, particularly if it's in a sensitive part of your body. Um, a couple of things about the oil. It is also still present in the dried form. Just because you've cut poison ivy and it's dried doesn't mean it's safe to handle. I should mention if you ever burn anything with poison ivy on it, well first you should never do that. The oil actually vaporizes in smoke and if you inhale it in your lungs that can be a serious, sometimes life-threatening condition. So always be aware we don't burn poison ivy. Poison ivy is not terribly difficult to control. There are chemical sprays that will work. One of the most effective is a um, chemical called triclopyr. It's T-R-I-C-L-O-P-Y-R. And that is sometimes with 2,4-D without. It's best probably for garden use to get it without 2,4-D because the 2,4-D can volatize and damage surrounding things. Anything that kills one woody plant will do damage to others. So if you're treating a flower bed, you have to be very, very careful or shrubs to just get the poison ivy. You also need to be aware if you're ever trimming or clipping or pruning poison ivy, which some people do with gloves and then wash up immediately afterwards, it's touch and go. But um, those tools become contaminated with the oils and if you don't wash them with alcohol afterwards, you can reinfect yourself. Similarly, it can get on gloves and jackets on equipment and then you keep getting reinfected months later and you don't know where it's coming from it's because you're coming into more contact with the oils on the handle of that shovel or something like that if you should encounter it and you know you've been exposed it's best not to one of the worst things you can do is weed eat or mow it because then you get all kinds of splattered leaves on you if you catch it fast enough sometimes just washing with soapy water will help remove some of the oils you have to have soap you want to use cool water when you use warm water to wash, it opens the pores in our skin and lets more oil in. That causes bigger problems. Cold water will cause the pores to contract and keep the oil out of the skin more. Also, alcohol is one of the most effective things to wipe it off with. You have to be very thorough and I'd still wash heavily with soap and water after the exposure. Many of the commercially available products to prevent or treat poison ivy or clean, clean it actually, 
are alcohol based. There are also various things on the market to help suppress the itch if you get into it. So that's a little bit about poison ivy, how to control it, how to identify it, what to look for. And ultimately when I'm out in the woods in the fall, I have to stop and appreciate how beautiful it is climbing up the trees when it turns red, orange, and yellow. So all plants serve a purpose. They feed wildlife, but that same wildlife spreads these seeds around and that's why it pops up out of nowhere in your beds and gardens. So hope this has been helpful in helping you understand poison ivy, avoid it if you need to, and um, just be aware, there's a lot of it out there. It's easily confused with things like Virginia creeper and other vines, but once you learn what it looks like, it becomes much easier to look for it, spot it, and just stay out of it to begin with.